Hello and welcome to another computing video. Uh, in this video I'm going to briefly introduce Scalable Vector Graphics, SVG. Uh, I'm not going to go into an enormous amount of detail but I'm going to introduce it to, to you uh, what the, the basics of it are and show you some examples. Uh, now, in an earlier video I introduced the canvas element and that let us um, have a rectangle of the screen that we could draw into by invoking JavaScript commands. Um, but in that case the drawing only existed in the JavaScript, it wasn't in the document. There were no elements apart from just the canvas element uh, to tell us what that drawing looked like. Uh, scalable vector graphics actually introduces elements for the for the drawing so that you have an element that's a, a circle or a, a line or whatever curve it is and that means that you can style them you can attach events to them they are first class citizens in the document if you like um, now let's pop straight to a very simple example uh, so here is a black circle oops here is a black circle sorry my scroll wheel happened to move the slide forward there for a moment uh, so to declare an SVG, uh, well, it's an SVG tag, uh, but we also need to tell it the XML namespace because, uh, well, this isn't an HTML element. This is an SVG element. Uh, it's just that browsers these days happily also tend to understand SVG. Uh, so we, we say that this element is SVG, but is SVG in the XML namespace of that particular URL there, which means SVG. And we've set this one to be 200 wide and 200 high and using version 1.1. And we've said that we want a circle within it. And here is our circle element and it is centered on the point 100, 100 with a radius of 100. Uh, now, in this case, because this is all stuff that goes in the HTML itself rather than being drawn in JavaScript, I can actually embed the example straight into my markdown slides here. So let me go inspect element and just open that straight up in um, in Firefox's uh, element inspector. And so we can see there is the SVG tag, width is 200, height is 200, version 1.1, XML namespace is uh, that URL. There is the circle and uh, it's an element in the document and it has attributes and I can go and edit those attributes in the inspector so for instance I could say actually no I want that only to have a radius of 10 and suddenly it's shrunk uh, the SVG hasn't but the circle has uh, or I could say well actually no I want that to have a radius of 115 and we'll see well the circle has a radius of 115 but it's still being clipped by the fact that this SVG only has a width of 200 and a height of 200 in there uh, okay, so that is what I mean by um, it is actually an element, uh, a, 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 a tree of elements effectively uh, within the document with their own attributes and as we'll see in the example later on we can add event listeners to them as well. Um, as well as primitive elements such as circle, uh, we could also for instance add a group, uh, a G element, a group of elements that lets us apply properties across uh, the uh, across that group so here in this case I have a group that says I want this stuff to be stroke is blue and fill is none and it is applying to both of these circles inside the group um, one of the other things I can do uh, there's some interesting properties that you can put onto groups and so one of them for instance uh, jumping over to the Mozilla developer uh, network documentation uh, is you could set a transform attribute and so what they've got in this example sitting here uh, is they have a path and this is a path element that uses particular drawing commands uh, so that string means move to the location 10 comma 30 um, a to the location 20 20 uh, 0 0 1 so that is a particular kind of curve uh, and so that is giving control points on that curve uh, another curve the other side Q uh, which I think is a cubic bezier um, around etc and so this then describes a heart shape and what we've got is we've got well the gray heart shape is rotated and it's translated and it's skewed and it's scaled and that has turned it from a path looking like that into 
a uh, a path looking like that kind of like a shadow and in this case it's fill is gray because it's inside that group and so there it is um, this one here then says well and also I would like to use and there is a cross link here uh, to the reference hash heart and well that path was defined with the ID heart and so they have uh, effectively repeated that path but with no fill and a stroke of red and there it is and so the, the, there again there are elements for each of these and you can open those in code fiddle etc and uh, play around with them uh, but so all I'm going to do uh, I'm not going to do anything quite that complicated uh, but let's over here on this group uh, let us um, sorry I need to inspect that element to get it to give me this group here and let me now go uh, oops not fill is none uh, I would like to say uh, transform equals and shall we just say translate of uh, 15 comma zero let's hit enter and see if those move and they did they just budged just a little bit they just just, just moved a bit and uh, let's do uh, let's do 30 and they've shifted a bit more and if I uh, change that translation to minus 10 we'll see them shift the other direction so there we go so we, we, we were applying a transform as an attribute up here on the group element and it was applying to uh, both the circles uh, that are going on within it okay let us keep moving along uh, so here is the slide that I'd kind of premix the transform in. Groups can also have a transform. This is like canvases translate and rotate, but the transformation matrix uh, is uh, is specified. And so here, transform equals, and this is <coughs> this is the matrix I want. Uh, up here, I could say, well, those are the commands that I. Um, I, I wonder if we could let us uh, inspect that element. And let us see if it will let us um, paste that in and hit enter. And uh, yes, it looks like we have just um, on this particular group, uh, we've, we've just rotated it, skewed it, etc., etc. Uh, whereas this circle is not inside that group, this black circle is outside of the group. There's the, the, the black circle, and there's this circle that has been. Transformed by that uh, transform attribute. Let's keep on going. Okay, so that, that that was a little bit more of an example on the transform element, uh, transform attribute. Sorry, on groups, paths. Uh, so this was, uh, and we we saw one over here. So we saw a path element there, and there is a path element that I've also got in the slides here. And so I've said, let's have a group and let's stroke it blue. Uh, with a stroke width of five and a fill of none and here I have given a set of commands to say move to the location 0 comma 50 uh, line lowercase l which means relative coordinates I would like you to go x I would like you to go 30 pixels y I'd like you to go 30 pixels then relative coordinates again because that's a lowercase l I would like a line 50 pixels and minus 30 so another 50 pixels and minus 30 uh, then 50 pixels and 40 pixels, 50 pixels and 40 pixels, and then I would like a uh, sorry. This is this is the cubic bezier. Um, the 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 Q in this one um, it, that that might have been a quadratic. Um, uh, let's go and have a look. I tell you what. Let us go and have a look at the uh, path uh, element in here. The path SVG element, and here we have various different examples. They've got. And this is uh, their listing of, well, there, there is the, the, the D attribute. And in here, um, here we have their list of commands. So move to line to various versions of that cubic Bezier curve, CCSS, quadratic Bezier curve. There we go. That was what the one that they had before with the Q was. It was a quadratic Bezier curve. Uh, or, you, or the A's were elliptical art. Uh, arc curves okay popping back to my example over here and so here we have a cubic bezier curve and so because it's a cubic bezier curve I've had to give it various different control points that and this is these control points lowercase c mean that it is relative to where it had got up to 
And so those control points are now describing that curve there that comes up here. And we can see the Z at the end. That means now close the loop again. And so that has done the line back again. Um, if I was to go and inspect that element, uh, I could start fiddling around with it. I could, for instance, uh, come on, let me edit in there. I could change that string so that uh, one of the control points on the cubic bezier, and if you have a look, the, the, the curvature on that uh, the curvature on that Bezier curve just altered a little bit. Uh, let's do something a little more dramatic and now um, that curve there's got a little bit longer etc. Okay so those are path elements that let you draw interesting shapes. Now when to use SVG? So in SVG the thing we have seen is that the each element in the drawing is an element in the document. Uh, and so that means, for instance, that we could style it with CSS. We could add a class to our circles earlier on and then have a CSS that says, well, a circle with this particular class should look like this. Um, it also means that we could uh, add uh, event listeners. So that when we click on the circle, we should do something. And when we click on the line and the path, we should do something else. Um, now, the styling and the handling of each of the different elements, that can involve a little bit of overhead for the browser. So if you have thousands upon thousands of uh, elements going on in there, it might not be quite as performant for an awful lot of elements as if you were painting them directly, uh, but it's still pretty quick. Uh, it does what's re called retained mode drawing, where it kind of remembers and caches what, the, what that uh, drawing looks like. Uh, whereas, for instance, with the canvas, uh, very often I was setting a timer to keep repainting it so we could animate it. You can also uh, animate the SVG, so for instance, by setting a timer and coming back and altering the properties of your SVG on the on the timer, you would, you would see it behave that way. And there's various other things. I'll, 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 let you, um, I'll let you have a look on the internet to find out a bit more about animating SVGs. Let us instead pop along to a small example of this in action. Uh, and what I mean by adding uh, event listeners to the SVG. Uh, so this example here, sorry, I already had it open. Uh, this example basically just has a seven segment display. And if I mouse over them, you'll see that um, you, you, you'll, you'll see that the pointer changes to, uh, well, a little, a little finger pointing to it. And if I click on it, uh, it toggles whether it is on or not. And so I can go and do a three or a, um, a seven, uh, or I could do a nine if I wanted. Uh, and so this is this very little example that I'm going to show you. And I could open the source code up in the browser. Uh, there's not a lot of it. Uh, let's actually just open this up in Visual Studio Code. Sometimes the syntax highlight highlighting helps. And so in here, SVG example. And so this is the text of it. And so you'll see here that I have created an SVG. Uh, there is the namespace on it. I've given it the ID of display so I can go and get it and I've given it a width and a height. Um, and I've also got a little bit of CSS styling um, that's going to apply to stuff that is created inside that SVG. Uh, but the stuff inside that SVG is actually being created in some JavaScript down here. And so what I have is I have an array of um, objects up here to describe the segments and their positions. Um, that top bar going from 75 to 325, uh, it, uh, sorry, 75 comma 50 to 325 comma 50. Uh, so this is describing the locations of the segments. And then I get the display element by its ID. And remember that display element in this case, it's the SVG. So I'm getting the SVG. And for each one of these segments, I am creating an element that is a line element. Uh, but you'll notice here I've had to say create element ns because I'm not creating an HTML element, I'm creating an SVG line element. And so I've passed in the namespace uh, for SVG and it is a line element within the SVG namespace. Uh, then within this I have given my line a, uh, a class so that that now has the class of segment. And I've given it attributes for its X and Y positions that uh, come from uh, its entry up here in the array. 
and I have added an event listener. And what this event listener is doing uh, is it is getting the element that I have just clicked on and it is toggling in its class list whether it has the class on or not. Uh, and then I am, uh, after, afterwards I am adding that element that I've just created, the line element, into the SVG. So if I pop back over here and instead let us open this up in the inspector which will see the lines that I've created, uh, we can see here is this line with the class is the classes of segment and on and when I go and click on it it now just has the class segment and so its color hasn't changed because I told it to change color I've changed the class of that element and a a line which has the classes segment and on in my uh, in my styling in here well I said an ordinary segment I would like you to do that in that gray color but if it has the classes segment and on, I would like you to color it orange. And so actually my click is just toggling this class and then my CSS, my styling on elements of that class are what is changing uh, the color of the segment. And so for instance, if I turn them all off, I could just as easily go to this one and say class and go and say, no, no, I would like you to give it the on the class as well and it has changed color. Uh, and down here in the CSS, I could say, uh, you know what, let's change that to 55, let's make it yellow, let's make it uh, 146 green, uh, 246 a blue color. Uh, so I can style my elements and I can attach event listeners to my elements because they are first class elements in the document. Okay, I'll let you go and explore a lot more uh, with SVG uh, or use it in your projects and find out what's going along. Uh, but that is the usefulness of SVG. We can have vector graphics that we can attach uh, styling classes, event listeners to the individual elements within the graphics rather than just the rectangle of the canvas as we did with the canvas element.